okay? Okay, I know some of y'all may not have uh, finished uh, eating, but we're going to go ahead and get started a little bit, and <clears throat> we'll thank the, the chefs and the cook. Uh, it was a very good meal. We'd like to start off recognizing a few people here. Um, we'll start off with Miss Trinis Embler and her daughter, Mally, who is the president of Alumni Association, seated right over here at our table. Uh, recognize Sheila Dossett, who is the Interim Executive Director of Alumni Affairs. Uh, definitely have to recognize Clay Cabot, uh, as well as telling Coach Alford. <laughs> if something goes wrong, we're going to blame him because he's told me to do it. So <laughs> anyway, he's done a lot. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to recognize, uh, let's see, Warner, Coach Warner Alford, who's been telling me about his hole in one as our M Club golf term. He's a, he's a of course, a former uh, athletic director and also uh, alumni director. Uh, let's see, we got, of course, Ross Borks here, uh, current, current athletic director. You'll hear from him in just a minute. <laughs> we got his right hand man, Steve Ponder, uh, who, who is uh, associate athletic director here. Uh, Keith Carter, who is uh, athletic, assistant athletic director and at the Athletics Foundation, and your wife, Jill, I'm sorry. And uh, Sonia, I forgot to recognize you. I apologize. I messed that up, not Clay. That's me. He had it down here. Um, I'd also like to recognize my coach, uh, Coach Brewer, who is a fellow M Club, my coach and fellow M Hall of Famer. Uh, I think um, Eddie Crawford here is here with his wife, Shirley. Did I see them earlier? There he is back in the back over there. Uh, Langston Rogers. Where are you at, Langston? Oh, right here below me. He's a fellow M Club Hall of Famer also. Uh, Coach, what, Coach David Wells, assistant director, athletic director, and his wife Karen. I think I see them over here somewhere. There they are. He's hiding. Um, I think our Corey, Coach Ho Corey Hinkus, our head women's golf coach. Is she here? There he is. She's in the back. Uh, D.T. Shackelford who's with our Assistant Athletics Foundation. I saw him earlier. There he is. He is back in the corner over there. Um, we also like to recognize uh, all the previous Hall of Fame Service Award members. Will y'all please stand and get recognized? Let's see, I know George is here. There you go. Uh, we'd also like to, uh, for the current uh, people, Hall of Fame inductees, past inductees, I think we've got 207 inductees. I don't know how many we got here tonight, but please stand. Wesley, Harry, Coach Austin. And then our current, I think it's in our list of our board of directors for them club alumni. Uh, I'd like to recognize them. I think. John's on there, Ryan, I think I saw Ryan somewhere. There we are, Don. We're good. Uh, and last but definitely not least, man back there uh, playing the music, Mr. Silas Reed. For, for my... Appreciate it. Uh, we're, my job is very easy tonight because Mike, uh, Mike again, and his athletics marketing team uh, do the majority of the video, so do all the video, not majority of it. So they'll do they'll do the introduction and everything. I'd like to recognize Mike and his staff. Mike he does a, <laughs> does a very good job, and I thank you, Mike, very much. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll we're on Mike, and we'll start the video presentation and go from there. Okay? Oh, I'm sorry, I did mess up. I forgot to recognize Ross. He's gonna come here and say a few words. That's my fault again. I've messed up twice. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Todd, Todd, relax. It's going to be okay. Don't, don't worry. We got, we, got, we, we, got you, we got you covered. So uh, greetings. I would also, uh, I think I saw him earlier. I think he's still here. My, my immediate predecessor, Pete Boone. Is Pete here? Where's Pete? Where is he? He was here. And um, I, I want to thank Pete uh, for, for laying a, a great foundation for where we are today. So what a great night to be at the University of Mississippi. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. As your athletic director, I want to provide greetings. We have 242 staff members and a, around 400 student athletes. So on behalf of all of them, welcome to tonight's festivities in the M Club Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I'm entering my, my fourth year, and I continue to really be amazed and humbled by the legacy that's been left before us by all of you and others that aren't in this room tonight. And that's what we're here for, is to honor all of you and what came before us. I want to thank the M Club board and especially Todd for serving as the president. All the support that the M Club provides in so many ways is, uh, is truly uh, uh, amazing for all of us. You know, to me, there's nothing better than being on a college campus, right? There's energy, there's spirit, there's passion, there's young people. Makes us all feel young for those that, of us that, uh, that work here. But it really provides a lot of inspiration and, and really confidence uh, for the entire uh, community, our alumni, our faculty, and, and our staff. And I would hope that all of you agree that there's no better time than to say right now that I am an Ole Miss Rebel. Would you agree with that? Thank you. Thank you. And so I, I only wear this red jacket on special occasions. I'm not the valet guy, but I've used this joke before. This is the fourth year in a row, but I will take your money. And so this week, it's been easy to take your money after last Saturday, let me tell you. No, I'm, we will uh, we'll, we'll definitely stay humble uh, as, as we move forward. But, you know, here, here's what tonight is all about. You know, in, in athletics, I believe an athlete, a coach, an administrator, what they do is they go out, they perform to the best of their ability, and they let whatever legacy that is formed happen. They don't set out to be in the Hall of Fame. They set out to compete at the highest level. And tonight is that culmination. Tonight is all of that coming together. So that process comes to fruition tonight. So Dory, Johnny, right? Dawson, where's Dawson? Dawson, John, where's John? John and Patrick. So you're part of that legendary group. You achieved the highest honor that Ole Miss Athletics and the university can provide to a student athlete. Our purpose is to provide an opportunity for our athletes to compete at the highest level. That's really ultimately what it's all about, compete at the highest level through athletics. So all of you have reached that purpose. You've reached your full potential. I congratulate you. Hotty toddy, go Rebels. Thank you. That's why he's an athletic director and I'm not. So anyway. <laughs> Now we're going to turn it back over to Micah, and we'll start off and, and, and induct these wonderful six inductees here. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2015 M Club Alumni Hall of Fame and Service Awards Ceremony. Being inducted tonight from women's golf, Dory Carter. From basketball, Johnny Newman. From football, Dawson Pruitt. From baseball, John Shaw. And from football also, Patrick Willis. The Lauderhaus Service Award recipient is Andy Kilpatrick. Our first award tonight is the 2015 Lauderhaus Service Award recipient. Andy was, uh, he and I the same age. He would have come in in 1970 with me, but his father was a, uh, a junior college football coach. And Andy came from obviously that family and decided to go and kick for his dad for a couple of years in junior college. So Andy would have come in probably in the fall of 1973 and uh, served as a, as a ma uh, not as a manager, but as a trainer uh, on the Ole Miss football staff and uh, worked his way through school. Uh, knew him at that point. I think he graduated in 74 and then went on to become a uh, to law school and become a, a successful lawyer. But he actually, uh, he knew how to work. He came here and, and did a great job of uh, working his way through, earning his education. So coming from a football family, he knew about service and dedication and all the things that go towards uh, create, creating a great life for himself. 
Well, as a football player, Andy was always there taping a lot of ankles. In those days, we had, just like the training rooms today, there was tables set up everywhere. And, of course, he worked under Doc Knight, who's a legendary uh, trainer here for Ole Miss for years and years and came in under Coach Ball. And so that last year, 1973, uh, Coach Ball came back, as everybody remembers, to coach the last uh, eight games of our season. So Andy was there to enjoy that along with the rest of us. And so he, uh, you know, he, he did a great job of, uh, as most – Football players can be a little bit arrogant, but Andy did a good job of keeping everybody in line. Andy's a guy that's always giving. I mean, the service award could easily be could easily be named the Andy Kilpatrick Service Award because he, since he's been president of the Ole Miss Alumni Association, which is the M Club Alumni Association, I'm not sure he's ever actually quit that position. He's come back and given many times uh, of himself. Uh, he's moved now closer to campus, so he's here more often, but he's served on committees for us. He's been obviously the president-elect. He stood in for several of our presidents. No one is more deserving of this award than Andy Kilpatrick. I'm happy for him and his wife, Debbie. Uh, it's been a long time coming. Obviously, we've had some prior recipients, but no one is more, more honored and, and deserving than Andy Kilpatrick. I'm extremely happy for he and his wife. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2015 M Club Lauderhaus Service Award recipient, Andy Kilpatrick. Obviously, I've got to pay far more attention to the picture that my wife is <laughs> putting out about me than, than what I've done. Um, I want to thank everyone that's here tonight that is, that is here for me. I, I've got some great friends here and some surprise visitors that uh, I didn't even recognize because I didn't expect them to be here. Thank you for being here. This M Club is one of the top one or two M Letterman's clubs in the country. It is not that because of me. It is because of all of the work that my brothers and sisters in this club have put into it. There is no one person in a team. There is always a group of people that, that get together and do something and make something happen. And that's what this club is about. So I thank each of my brothers and sisters for elevating us to a, to a point of prominence in a letter winner's club that, that very few schools have the opportunity to reach. 40 years, four months, 25 days, and approximately six and a half hours ago, I married Deborah Martin. <laughs> Ole Miss has given me a lot of great things, and I will touch on a couple of them quickly in a moment, but the greatest thing it gave me was Debbie. When you marry an M Club member, you can marry into this club as much as you want to. Debbie chose to marry in wholeheartedly. She never once complained about anything that I did with this club. She sold raffle tickets. She sold T-shirts. She, she sponsored the ladies' luncheon for summer weekends. Without her and, and people like Betty Ann and Carolyn and, and Vicki and... and others this club doesn't work i thank her and i thank all of them for what they've given there's three groups of people that i want to thank first of course is the club my dad played football and basketball here as a freshman he was injured in the spring in football and decided to leave and go home because some woman was worrying the heck out of him back in philadelphia so he married her and had me, which is an integral part of the reason that I'm standing here. <laughs> but he loved Ole Miss. He never forgot Ole Miss. And to each of his, to each of his teammates that welcomed him back in the old club room every time he came here, thank you. When, when Coach Gibbs told me he had lettered me, first I was shocked, and then I called Dad. And he said to me, son, you've earned a lot of letters, but you do not understand what being a member of the M Club is until you leave Ole Miss. I thought, I don't know, Dad. 
I'm having a pretty bang up time up here right now. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But as I got, as I, as I graduated and I moved on, I realized that what this club meant. My dentist was an M-Club member. My vet was an M-Club member. My ophthalmologist was an M-Club member that was here after me. My financial advisor is an M-Club member that was here before me. I called doctors who were M-Club members to get referrals. And why did you do that? It's because they were teammates. It didn't matter if they played with you, if they were here before you, here or after you. They had your back, you had had theirs, and you could trust them. To this day, with very few exceptions, a couple of whom are here tonight, my closest friends are M-Club members. It is something that I cherish, and I will always cherish. Second, I want to thank Ole Miss. Ole Miss gave me the opportunity for an education. That's all a university gives you is an opportunity. You have to choose to seize that opportunity to make something of it. I will freely admit that in my early tenure at Ole Miss, I took far more advantage of the societal opportunities that <laughs> Ole Miss had to offer than I did the educational ones. And if you factor in my junior college career, that explains the extra couple of semesters it took me to get my degree. But like a patient mother with a, a troublesome child, Ole Miss stood by me, did not give up on me. And when I got my act together, gave me my degree. And finally, to the athletic department. For while Ole Miss gave me the opportunity for an education, it was the athletic department that gave me the financial ability to reach that education. But for the scholarship that, that Ole Miss's athletic department gave me, I am not certain that my then high school football coach father and my stay-at-home mother with two children to raise could have afforded to send me to Ole Miss. Certainly not in the way that I was trying to attend it. <laughs> but because of that, I was, a, I was able to achieve a goal. And as a result of that, I owe so much to this M Club, to the athletic department, to Ole Miss, that I will try to pay back. This is an aptly named George W. Lauder House Service Award. But for me, as a service, it is one of an indentured nature. For if I can pay back a portion of what this university, this club, this athletic department has given me, I will consider my goal achieved. For that reason, I will con continue to serve this M Club, Ole Miss, and this athletic department for as long as my Lord and Savior will give me the physical ability and the mental capacity to do so. That is a solemn vow. God bless this M Club. God bless Ole Miss. And God bless the United States of America because it really needs it right now. Thank you. Our first inductee of the night is Dory Carter. Dory was a great teammate. She kept us accountable. She made us work hard. Um, she was a lot of fun. We were always laughing, but she was always pushing us. She was really, really encouraging to me when I've had good days and bad days. And, you know, if I've had a, a bad day of golf, you know, she would be the one that would go on the range with me afterwards and work with me and talk to me. And it could be just a pep talk. Rachel, come on, you can pick yourself up. It's, um, it'd be very encouraging. And then it would be a much better day the next day. I'll never forget when we were coming down to the wire in a tournament, um, we were at Auburn. And it was really our, it ended up being our best tournament when we were there. Uh, we finished in third, and it 
moved us up way up in the rankings and it was we had talked the night before about you know fighting to the end and just keep going and that was a great day for her and our team um, also when she won our home tournament it was we were out there cheering her on and you know she there's she's always been a fighter and she's very competitive I remember um, her fifth year when we were still in school together and living together you know she told me I'm gonna go professional and she didn't lie and look where she is today and you know her yes we were in Oxford Mississippi one of the most fun college towns there is but she made a commitment to to work really hard and she ne we never did anything you know at night she would want to go to bed at nine so that she could wake up and work at her game and that shows how competitive she is and it it's paid off I remember our freshman year, we were going to a tournament. Dory and I were the only freshmen going. It was our first college tournament, and we were at College of Charleston, and this, staying at this amazing plantation, playing golf at Yeaman's Hall. And we're driving down this little dirt road to our house there, and she said, hey, coach, can we go spot some deer? And I'll, it was just, that's Dory. You know, she's still South Georgia girl, but you know, she's done great things, but she's still true to herself. And that was one of my favorite times. And you know, another thing that's has always cracked me up, Dory will go out and shoot even par, but you know, a shank is almost a cuss word for us golfers. But every day but when she's warming up, every time she gets the first shot on the range is a shank. And it was kind of a, it was always a joke between us. You know, she'd get up there, if she shanked it on the practice round, the practice tee, the first shot, it was like, it's gonna be a good day. And that was always our joke between each other. So she lives life, she plays hard, and she works hard. But, you know, she's, it's really, that's just Dory. You know, every day she's always working. And the same thing goes for school. You know, I've, there's, when we lived together in my condo, she would stay up all night to make sure she made an A on every test. Dory, you are so deserving of this honor. I'm so proud of you and so happy for you. All those years and times of, hard work have paid off and you deserve this. You are the Ole Miss girl to a T in your pearls and your cowboy boots and your hotty toddy cups and all those times we've spent on the square, but you more than anything deserve this athletic honor. I'm so happy for you and love you and hotty toddy. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2015 M Club Alumni Hall of Fame inductee, Dory Carter. Well, I was nervous until that video, and now I'm like, all the embarrassment's out of the way, so. <laughs> Um, thank you, Rachel, for doing that. Uh, it meant a lot, and um, you know, seeing those pictures up there kind of brought back a lot of really good memories. So thank you for doing that. Uh, first, I would like to thank the M Club members and all who are part of the selection process. Um, this is truly an honor, and I'm very grateful to have been selected to join such an elite group. Um, as I receive this honor, I can't help but think about the people who helped me get to this place in my career. My family, especially my parents and my sister, um, they've been and, and still are the biggest influence in my life. I'll never forget um, when I was in high school first trying to decide, uh, you know, learning about junior golf and, and learning about college golf and possibly being recruited. Um, I'll never forget the conversation we had in our living room my freshman year in high school. My parents asked me, you know, if I even wanted to play college golf and uh, I took some time to think about it and obviously chose to play and uh, it took several years after um, that conversation you know to truly appreciate what that meant and so mom and dad uh, thanks for letting it be my choice and uh, thank you for all your sacrifices that helped me get to where I am today um, I'd like to also thank my one and only swing instructor, Gail Peterson, who's not here, but uh, she has been my coach for 13 years and um, continues to push me and guide me to the next level on the LPGA Tour. And in one of our early lessons, um, I remember her telling me that I had what it takes to uh, make it on tour. 
and that she believed that I would get there. And I kind of looked at her like, okay. Um, I didn't think I would even get there. So I have this incredible instructor believe in me, and I'm so grateful that she saw the potential in me at an early age. Uh, the next, um, I'd like to thank my coaches here at Ole Miss, um, Megan Stasi, who recruited me here. It's a miracle um, that I was even recruited. Uh, I'm so grateful that she took a chance on a small town girl from Georgia who flew under every other coach's radar. I mean, I, it's a miracle. Um, and there is no doubt that I wouldn't be here without Coach Michelle Drinkard. I really broke out of my shell my junior and senior year when Coach came and uh, here at Ole Miss, and I have her to thank. Um, I learned so many things, like power of hard work, how to be a team leader, and how to focus on what's important. I gained the confidence to turn pro and eventually qualified for the LPGA. So thanks, Coach, um, for helping me become the player I am today. I'd like to thank uh, my friends and my family that are here tonight, uh, my grandparents, aunts and uncle, my cousin who is now uh, in grad school here at Ole Miss, extremely jealous, wish I could start over and, and come back to school. Uh, my former teammates here, um, Catherine and Rachel, thank y'all for coming, and especially my Delta Gamma sorority sisters who never had a clue about how I played in any of my golf tournaments. <laughs> Yet every time um, congratulated me, I came, I mean, every time I came home, congratulated me and then asked what was I wearing to the fraternity swap that night. <laughs> Good times. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I'd also like to thank my friends from the LPGA Tour that are here. Uh, thank you all for coming and supporting me all these years. I have so much pride for the University of Mississippi. Um, I cannot tell you how much I love and still love representing Ole Miss on the golf course. I travel all over the world playing golf, and uh, it's amazing how many recognize the Ole Miss on my golf bag and um, conversations that I've had with people all over the world. Um, and so I usually, uh, we usually start talking about current Ole Miss football or baseball and always end up with the, end with a hottie toddy and go Rebs. But, um, I may be the first female golfer in the Hall of Fame, but I certainly won't be the last. Um, I'm so proud of the Ole Miss Golf Program and so honored to be representing the program in the Hall of Fame. And uh, by the way, can I somehow get a ride in that brand new Mercedes van with TV, Wi-Fi, XM radio? Um, it sure beats the heck out of the navy blue 15 passenger van with questionable radio <laughs> that I took almost every tournament, took almost every tournament back when I played. I'm gonna take, Corey, I'm gonna need to take you up on that one day. Um, but anyway, last uh, congratulations to my fellow inductees tonight. Um, and I cannot thank you enough for this honor and for selecting me into the M Club Athletics Hall of Fame. Hotty toddy, go Rugs. <laughs> Our next inductee is Johnny Newman. Before I met Johnny, I would kept up with him in the newspapers, the commercial appeal, and on the local stations out of Memphis, but my first real recollection is Cat Robbins, one of our assistant coaches, that went to see him play in high school, and I spoke to him the next day, and, and I said, you know, Cat, you know, what, uh, what's this other cat all about? And he said, Steve, he's the best I've ever seen. He was 6'6", uh, but he ran like he was 5'11". 
uh, he was extremely quick and fast, and there's a, a difference between being quick and fast rather than just being quick or fast. He had it both, and when he wanted to, he, he didn't like to play defense a lot. Uh, he played what we call the matador defense, but when he wanted to, he was tenacious on defense because he had such a, a wide wingspan, and he was so quick and so fast, plus he was savvy. I guess the most outstanding memory I have is we were playing LSU at their place, and we were playing on, back then they had regional TV. We were playing a regional TV game, and uh, Johnny uh, put 63 on them, and we were setting picks 25 feet deep, and I was, in fact, I was a little bit of a joker. I was laughing every time he took a shot from about 30 and hitting nothing but bottom, and, of course, it was killing the LSU fans. We were playing state at state, which of course is inhospitable to the Rebs. And uh, one thing that we had learned early on is when we went into hostile environments, uh, and of course the gym was packed, everybody wanted to see Johnny play. And uh, we decided we didn't want to be around him while we were shooting layups because they were throwing hot pennies at us. They would heat pennies up and throw them at you. And if you were sweaty, when they hit, they would stick and burn you. So we tried to stay as far away from Johnny as we could while the state fans were stealing our basketballs and doing what state fans do. When I grew up, I've always been a basketball historian of sorts, and I kept up with Bob Cousy, Hot Rod Hunley, some of the earlier players. But then Pete Maravich came along, and at that point, the game started evolving, and Johnny was part of that. Uh, he changed the game of basketball with the way he played. For instance, he could play any position on the floor. You didn't have to worry whether he was playing forward, guard, or center. He could play them all. And the difference between Johnny and Pete was Johnny would, I mean, Pete was more of a sh showman than Johnny was. Johnny was concentrating on putting the ball in the hoop. He could take you there, and he could take you there strong, and you could not stop it. If he got the break on him, you were not going to catch him. Uh, he can make every pass known, although he didn't like to pass a lot. But uh, he could do it all, and I could see the game changing with Johnny. In fact, uh, after watching Johnny play, law school looked pretty good to me. There's a pride that is difficult to describe when you see one of your contemporaries become the best become the best of the best. Also the fact that he had been gone for so long from Ole Miss and he's come back here and done something which I don't know anyone else could possibly do and that is get his degree. He will get his degree in uh, December. And the pride that I feel for him and for the university because of him uh, cannot be described. It's indescribable. Uh, it just makes me happy inside. Johnny, uh, I'm looking into the camera for this one, John. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of you. This is something that you earn. Uh, you were the best of the best. And uh, if you were playing today, you would still be the best of the best. God bless you, and I'm so proud of you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2015 M Club Alumni Hall of Fame inductee, Johnny Newman. Excuse me for being a little emotional, but uh, everything happens for a reason. And who would have thought after 40 some odd years, I would be back here. And I was able to do just about anything on a basketball court. I was tremendously gifted as a player and as a coach. I was the number two high school basketball player in the nation. And I chose to come to a little town of Ole Miss. And it was the greatest experience I ever had. The problem was I had to leave too early because my father suffered a heart attack. But, you know, I was really worried because, hell, I had no idea what Clarice was going to say. <laughs> and the situation is 
is that when you look back, this is the greatest honor probably that I will achieve in my life. And I've coached in the World Cup. I've coached all over the world. And I've played everywhere in the world. I've coached five players that have went on to the NBA when I was overseas. But this award is a tremendous award. But when I came here, I was a high school All-American. But, you know, you mentioned Johnny Vaught. Well, Johnny Vaught, Bear Bryant, they were all there to recruit me and to bring me here. And when I came with Ole Miss, there were four other high school All-Americans other than myself. And these players sacrificed to help me accomplish the goals that I did. Then I want to go on and tell you something that's even more important than this great award that I've achieved today. And, you know, you can see I have no notes because I'm not a kind of guy, if I'm not emotional, hell, I'm not going to tell you what I think. <laughs> and so I came back after 42 years because I got this call from this guy after old, uh, Commercial Appeal had written an article on me and wanted to know what the hell I was doing. And I was in Greece at that time, and my lovely ex-wife is here uh, be at the ceremony with me because we have a son who's a tremendous soccer player and we want to put him in the MLS. But this guy named Faris is on the phone. And so I'm talking to Steve, and he says, Johnny, come home. And I have a, a sick little girl, and I came home, and I was afraid to return to Ole Miss because of the fact I left. And if I had no left, no telling how great the basketball program would have been. And Faris has spent thousands of dollars to help me. Then there's this guy here who's probably got the ugliest damn red jacket I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so I hear about this guy. So I come here, and I know who Ross is. But I'm saying, hell, Ross doesn't know me. Hell, he probably wasn't even born when I played. And so I went in, and I talked to Ross. And he set me, table 21 are my guests. They're all of my professors that have helped me. And I call, I don't want to name them all, but Drew Clinton, I'll name the one, is my FedEx advisor. But because of the encouragement that Ross gave me and the financial things that Steve had done for me, I went back to Ole Miss. And you want to know culture shock. I got daughters that I'm in class with. And when I was here, you had the Southern Bells that looked all like you beautiful women do today. Now, hell, they're jogging around campus. <laughs> and, I, and, you know, and I'm saying, how in the hell could you be study if you're an athlete? Because they're half naked. <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and I'm sitting there and I'm saying, wow. You know, I got to get up front to where I can't see anybody in the back. And athletes are never in the damn front of the class. And so I got one professor, Dave Waddell from Park and Recreation. He used to pick on me all the time. So we had all these football players. So I'd disrupt class. Then he'd say something, embarrass me. Then Denzel Washington, uh, Denzel would come into the conversation, Kenichi. And all of the football players would get involved in our class. And we have some of the most intelligent athletes that I can ever visualize being at the University of Mississippi. Because we lived in dormitories back when I was here. And we had this relationship that we developed. And the closest thing to me is Steve Faris, who is closer to me than a brother. Because when you develop a relationship with another athlete, it's actually, for me, closer than actual blood family. And like I said earlier, 
Two players have passed that were recruited, David Rhodes and Red Smith, and they deserve this honor that I've achieved because they helped me get here. And then last, I want to thank Michael Joe Cannon, who wasn't able to be here, but he's enabled me to use uh, one of his cars to be able to get around for two and a half years, and God willing, because a lot of people don't uh, believe it, but Faris can tell you, I'm extremely religious because I was gifted. I could do things I never practiced. They came easy to me. And all of the other M Club honorees and the people that will be inducted tonight, we've all been gifted with an instinct. And when you find your instinct and you believe in God, there's no limit to what you can accomplish. And so this is the greatest honor I can have. But hopefully, December 12th, when I graduate, that'll be the day. Thanks, Ron. Our next inductee is Dawson Pruitt. Well, we kind of started playing about the same time, 1987. He quickly made his way into the uh, into playing time, so I got to spend the last three years of my time with. Uh, with Dawson Pruitt as, as, uh, as my center. But just a guy you could depend on, a guy you could trust, a player that, you know, made, on paper may not have been uh, the size and, and uh, speed is, is what you're supposed to be to be an offensive lineman in the SEC, but um, just that player that, that, that Coach Brewer, kind of player Coach Brewer liked to recruit, a uh, guy that's going to work hard, going to come in, got great work ethic. Dawson has spent a couple years in the military, so he came in, uh, a little more mature than, than most uh, most guys, and uh, to use words from former offensive line coach Joe Wickline, he was a guy that understood the grind, a uh, good student, uh, counting major, took that very seriously. So uh, just a great guy to, uh, to be around and a great guy for our team. And also a very intense guy. He was mean, he was tough, but um, he was also a fun guy to be around. Um, in practice, he thought it was he thought it was funny that, that uh, he would just be soaked with sweat. And uh, us quarterbacks, Mark Young, myself, Russ, and Tom, uh, Luke, just had to take snaps from him. And, and you know, he's just so, soaking wet, you know, and he thought, he thought that was funny. And he, he also thought it was, was fun to tell us all what he had had for lunch. You know, um, Dawson was very vocal in the huddle. I think he might have been the only person allowed to speak in the huddle besides the quarterback. But uh, I think I can speak for the other quarterbacks and say that, um, that Dawson uh, was a very good leader in the huddle. The one time I think he yelled at me was um, uh, in the Alabama game in 1988. Uh, we had went up 15 to 12. The game was pretty much over. Um, Wesley Wall sacked the quarterback. They fumbled. We get the ball back. All we got to do is go in and take a snap to, uh, to end the game, victory formation, get out there. We don't have enough players on the field. So, of course, everybody was excited. Uh, looked to the sideline, they're calling timeout. We called timeout, come back into the huddle, and the instructions from the sideline were to run another play, run a play, a play, a play at the line, call the play at the line. They gave me a couple of plays, and uh, Dawson Pruitt did not want to have any of that. Um, I think he grabbed me by the throat and said, no, you're going to take a knee. And um, I said, looked over the sideline, I thought, no, I think I'm going to run what they, they called. So we ended up running another play and scored a touchdown. So uh, I think I was off the hook on that one. But uh, he made everybody around him better. Uh, he influenced the whole team, both offense and defense, had a great influence on, on, on his teammates. Um, I, I think back, and uh, Tim Brown, one, another offensive lineman, reminded me of this story that uh, every spring, Coach Red Parker had us write down three names that if we had to be in a foxhole, who would we be in there with? And uh, Dawson Pruitt got more votes than anybody. So that, that tells you kind of how, uh, what the team 
uh, what his teammates thought about, about Dawson Pruitt. But um, well-deserving, a guy that just uh, day in and day out was better than his opponent. And, uh, and he had to go up, up, up against some good ones in this league and uh, just excited for him to have this honor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2015 M Club Alumni Hall of Fame inductee, Dawson Pruitt. I have a bunch of notes, but I, I might scrap them. Patrick and John told me they wanted 30 minutes each up here, so I'm gonna have to finish quickly. <laughs> hey, it's a great honor to go in with Dory, Johnny, John, Patrick. It really is. When I was playing Patrick, linebackers didn't look like you, I'm telling you. <laughs> And if they would have, I'd have found another way to get an education. <laughs> no doubt. As I said in the video, I, I, I was in the Army from 84 to 86, and uh, I was invited up uh, to Ole Miss in 19, December of 1986. And... Uh, I went in with Coach Brewer. We always had a closing meeting at, at the end of recruiting. I guess we did. That was the only recruiting visit I ever had. But I go in there with Coach Brewer, and I've been in the Army for two years, and I figured I'm going to have to walk on, which I was more than happy to do. And Coach Brewer offered me a scholarship. And I was sitting there, and I thought, he has me confused with another recruit. <laughs> I said, I, I, said, I, said, I said, this isn't possible. <laughs> so I, I, I started thinking, how can I get this done before he changes his mind? <laughs> so I looked at Coach Brewer and I said, Coach, is it okay if I go home to Mobile, Alabama, get some clothes and move, come back and move in the dorm? <laughs> he had a strange look in his face and he said, no, son, you have to wait the next semester. So I asked a few more questions, and finally I said, so coach, when you say next semester, you mean January, right? Next month. And I could tell he was getting a little irritated, so I just, I left it alone after that. But I drove home and uh, told my mom and dad, and you know, of course they were terribly excited, but all I could keep thinking about was, he thinks I'm another recruit. He made a mistake. <laughs> so I, uh, I can't remember, I think they told us probably the 8th or 10th of January to come back, and I think I probably came back on the 2nd of January. <laughs> well, the dorms weren't open yet, so I had to spend a couple of nights at a hotel. But I, I absolutely didn't want to miss out. And, uh, but we, we go through spring practice, that, or go through spring drills this year, and Ken wanted me to, to tell this embarrassing story on myself, but... I'm out there, spent several years in the military, and Coach Robert McGraw was our offensive line coach. Probably as, as rough a coach as anybody could ever play for. But we're out there running through drills, and they have these ropes that you run through. So I'm watching all the other guys. Ken always had great feet. He's running through there with great agility. Jay Schimmel, Todd Irvin, they're running through there. It gets to be my turn. So I take off running, and I take about two steps, and I catch the rope. And I felt myself falling, and then I felt the ropes unrolling. All of a sudden, I'm laying down there, and I'm wrapped up in the whole rope. <laughs> Coach McGraw looks at me and says a few choice words and tells me how sorry I am and proceeds to just tell everybody else to move over and move the drill while I'm laying there in the rope still tangled up. <laughs> I really wanted to quit and go back to Mobile. I was so embarrassed. I, 
a few, probably a couple months later, we start spring practice, and nobody had really told me what position I played. <laughs> so we go out to spring practice, and I, and I, I jump in there with the offensive lineman. So we, we start practicing and move through a few drills and get into a contact drill and Coach Brewer's in his tower. The next thing I hear is, Coach McGraw, Coach McGraw, get that damn long snapper out of that drill. <laughs> I knew what position I played though. See, Ole Miss had lost a couple of games the year before on long snaps. So Coach Brewer brought me in to be a long snapper. Well, after practice, I went up to Coach McGraw, and I said, Coach McGraw, I know I have to long snap. And I, I said, I want to do it. I said, but I came here to play, and I'm not going to stay here if I don't get a chance to play. He looked at me, he said, Dawson, I'll talk to Coach Brewer. I don't know what I can do. A few minutes later, I'm walking off the practice field, and I'm thinking, that's the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I said, where am I going to go if he tells me I've got to get out of here? <laughs> I couldn't have gone to a junior college. But the next day, I, I came back to practice, and, and thanks, thank goodness, Coach Brewer let me stay in there and uh, and, and participate. But um, I, it's it's been a great honor to to be inducted, Coach Brewer. Tremendous respect for you. I I, I think you laid the foundation for what the university is enjoying today. Hey, all the players, we love you, Coach. And um, uh, you gave me the opportunity to get a great education and um, play with some of the best players that ever played the game. Wesley Waltz, who's here tonight, uh, Kelvin Pritchett, Everett Lindsay, Tony Gator Bennett. And players, God, all of them were so great. And uh, some of the greatest teammates anybody could ever have. Ken Williams, Abner, Coach Tim Brown, who's a minister now. Um, God, I'm going to forget so many people. Bubba Gunner, Scott Squaffle, Sean Cobb, Pat Coleman, Jeffrey, John, Sandroni. I mean, it, 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 was, a, uh, it was a great ride. And I wish we could all do it over again. Thank you very much. Our next inductee is John Shaw. second baseman. He, he, was, he was the ultimate uh, second baseman. Uh, first of all, John was a uh, great guy, a real gentleman, very, very polite, um, real, you know, a handsome guy. And he'd played a lot of baseball. He, he was really established at, at second base. So here I am going in trying to be a college shortstop. John was a, our leadoff batter and a great second baseman, could cover a lot of ground, Never made any mental mistakes, just just an ultimate player. And John knew how to read pitchers, get a good lead, and he had a green light to steal. And most of the time, I mean, he, he was successful. So I could run a little bit, and I'm not sure I knew what I was doing, especially against left-handers. But uh, over a few games, Coach Swayze gave me the green light, too. So it was kind of fun 
if John and I could get on, I mean, we'd both still suck. He'd still suck, and I'd get on, I'd still say. And sometimes we'd do a double steal. I played North Carolina. They had a catcher. All I remember, his first name was Skip. And uh, John gets a hit. It's on first. I'm up to bat. And the first pitch he goes, Skip guns him down. I mean, he's out like it. Kind of got my attention. So I didn't say anything to John. We got, you know, do we? Got out in the field the next inning, we in between a little bit. I said, hey, I said, catcher, catcher's got a good arm, huh? He said, he's got a good arm. You don't need to try him. I said, yeah, you're right. So anyway, uh, I got to hit about the fourth inning. You know, and Shaw telling me I don't need to try him. You know I'm going. I mean, I'm going. So I, I try, it was a right handed pitcher, too. I get my best lead and everything. I, get, I take off. I'm telling I, I, I started to not even slide. The, 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 he, got, he threw it down there so quick and, and gunned me out. I, I should have listened to, to Shaw and not tried him. That was kind of our bond. Not only he helped me out, kind of learn, you know, college baseball from the infield perspective, but also stealing bases. That was kind of the second thing. I dropped a fly one time. After, <laughs> after I dropped one one time, I pretty much let Shaw, I let John have him. He, uh, and he, he just, he didn't mess up. So good, and he was smart. And he wound up being, uh, I was on the business, he was, he was uh, he tutored me in economics. He'd be a lot of guys on a bus trip, uh, cutting up a little bit, having fun. John might be studying, so you get into him a little bit there. John was a, um, he was just an all-star player, outstanding athlete, outstanding student athlete uh, for Ole Miss. And, uh, Long overdue for him to go into the M Club Hall of Fame. And I'm sure he will take a lot of pride in that, appreciative. And, you know, I've had a lot of teammates uh, throughout the years in, in football and some in baseball, and you couldn't, couldn't have a better teammate than John Shaw. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2015 M Club Alumni Hall of Fame inductee, John Shaw. Just thank Todd for putting me in between Dawson here and his 12 minutes rip a stitch act, and then uh, my favorite linebacker Patrick Willis. You know, and uh, in the picture there, uh, I have to get some elevator shoes so they can see that there's somebody actually in between it. Um, but uh, before I get going, I'd like to just say uh, this is a uh, this is something which I, I consider not to be about the inductees, but to be about the spirit of Ole Miss, about being family, about people remembering who their friends are, sticking next to their friends, never forgetting. I've got, I've got a family here whose mother never missed a baseball game at Old Swayze Field, and she's here, her sister's here, her daughters are here, and they came just because, uh, you know, they are, their mother was such good friends with my mother. Uh, before I uh, say a few remarks, I. I I just want to let you know that I am just one flat out blessed person. I have the most wonderful family. I have three children, young adults, who all played co college sports. My daughter ran for Joe Walker here at uh, Ole Miss for two years. My two sons played baseball. And um, uh, I just am so proud of them, and I want y'all to know that. I have four granddaughters. There'll be no boys in the Shaw clan. Uh, Savannah one day said, uh, Libby said that her daddy was coming, uh, that, that her granddaddy was coming home to do proje a project. Savannah said, Grandmama, daddy does projects. Granddaddy runs through the sprinkler. <laughs> so my legacy is already set with my granddaughters. And uh, Libby, thank you for keeping the ship rolling through the good times and the bad times. And for, I just want everybody to know, I went to an FCA meeting with uh, Jim Bain uh, uh, here before I graduated. I was from Baltimore, Maryland. I wasn't even a three-day a church, three-day uh, a year man at church. And uh, Libby led me to Christ a week later. We got married, uh, signed with the Yankees, got my first car all within the space of two weeks. And, uh, you know, which one was more important, accepting Christ and marrying Libby? And... Uh, 
Uh, I still disagree with her on the one point, though, about when she uh, said, John, our children, you, you just don't need to, to uh, coach them anymore. You know, and so I dropped, they're not listening to you anymore. Have you, any of y'all had that experience? Your kids don't listen to you? And I said, Libby, I said, they're all only 32 and 33 years old. <laughs> don't they need a little coaching from their dad? <laughs> but uh, I live in Birmingham now. Need to let you know just a little bit about the history of my, of my family. My granddaddy was the first dean of the School of Education here. Um, in 19, started 1929. Uh, my family's, I've had family here for 50, 50 years. My father boxed for Ole Miss. And I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and ended up down here. Um, I live in Birmingham now, and it just hasn't been a very happy place. So if you're still ex <laughs> I haven't seen a smile all week. And I kept telling everybody that the <laughs> I was going to say, can I get a, can I get a hotty toddy and see some smiles tonight? Because it's been a poor week in Birmingham. But I told everybody, I said, listen, don't feel too bad. That was not a flute play. Uh, Attaboy Joe caught that ball just like Hugh drew it up this summer. <laughs> but excitement would not be the appropriate term when Charlie Williams called me and said that I was being inducted into the M Club Hall of Fame. You'd have to put some superlatives in there, sort of like an out-of-the-world excitement I had. And uh, I said, I can't remember anything I said, really, but when I said, I do remember the one part of the conversation. I said, Charlie. Did you, reserve the right for, did you reserve 20 minutes for me to say a word? <laughs> and he said, yeah, John, just know that, I, that the committee also reserved the right to take a revote on your nomination. <laughs> so with that positive reinforcement, <laughs> I, why don't you just run a, sprint, a, sprint around the base, base pass with me for a second. I'm going to take my lead off first and first thank the M Club nominating committee for uh, bestowing upon me the, uh, the second biggest award. I've ever gotten here at the university. The first was getting the Eddie McClarty Memorial Award. Uh, Eddie was my best friend and first baseman, uh, was tragically killed in an automobile accident uh, in 1970 before he signed with the Chicago Cubs. And uh, at our baseball banquet, Coach Swayze gave that to me. So um, you're a close second. Um, it means very, uh, it means a whole lot to me and, and to our family, as you can imagine. And uh, when I reflect back on this award, I'm, uh, you could think about, I could think about records and accomplishments, stolen bases and uh, other records. Um, but um, my favorite philosopher, Yogi Berra, said one time, he said, if you don't know where you're going, be careful. You just might get there. And anybody with rebel spirit knows where they're going. They're moving forward and they're pressing on. And I'm going to use every time I see this award in our house, it's going to motivate and challenge me, just like for 26 years, this pen of number 38 has challenged me to have the courage to step out of my shell, try and be significant in the life of another person, and make things better for somebody less fortunate. So that's our challenge with the rebel spirit today. Move forward, press on be significant in somebody else's life. As I'm uh, inching away from second, I want to thank everybody for taking uh, their time away from their family to come. I want to congratulate all of the other inductees and encourage you to, uh, to keep being a role model for youth and uh, all those you come in contact with that, ne that need direction. Um, I want to thank um, all my teammates. I want to especially thank Ross Bjork and the whole entire Ole Miss coaching staff for continuing the legacy of what Ole Miss sports is. That is, teams that dedicate themselves, commit themselves, give 100% for the team goals, sacrificing individual goals, and having a positive, lasting effect on the attitudes and the values of the young student athletes that play underneath them. So let's give, I'd like everybody to give the athletic program a welcome. I call, I call that value-based leading. Our coaches lead based on the values and the ideals that would lift, lift young athletes up. I have four men in my life I'd like to quickly thank. That is, number one, I'd like to thank my high school 
basketball coach, the late, great Bill Caldell, who encouraged me not to listen to, to um, the voices of limitations, but to reach for the rim. I was more known as a basketball player, never saw a shot I didn't like around the Baltimore area, and uh, decided to come to Ole Miss rather than play basketball. I'd like to, to also recognize one of the greatest ambassadors of the, of the University of Mississippi, and that's Tom Swayze, who for over 40 years uh, represented the university with integrity and uh, dedication and dignity. Uh, he was more than a coach to many players. He was a father figure to me. His, uh, his influence is, I still feel every week, and think, we think of him often and speak of him often. And Warner, as you can tell Kay, that uh, we, loved, we loved her dad very much. Another person I'd like to uh, recognize is Willie Buford, who was the pastor of a very prominent Baptist church here uh, in town. And Willie was also the, key, the uh, head of grounds here at Ole Miss when, when we played. Willie kept a pristine infield. Bad hops were a rarity. And I can remember before every game, Willie would search me out and say, John, you've got a fast track today. Pick them up and lay them down. The last person I'd like to recognize in the Ole Miss family is Charlie Williams. Uh, Charlie, are you here? If you'd stand up, please. Charlie Williams was my third base coach. Go ahead and stand up, Charlie, please. <laughs> what kind of man would come to a second baseman after his second game and say, John, you're going to shatter my record of stolen bases. I'm going to be your biggest supporter, and uh, I'm going to help you do it. That's an old Miss Rebel man. That's who will do that. That's family, and that's Charlie Williams. Charlie, thank you very much. I enjoyed playing for you. Uh, great guy, and everybody on the team did. So I'm going to take Willie's advice and pick him up and lay him down and do my favorite slide in the second base. Not a hook slide, not a, not a head first, but a pop-up slide. Why did I like the pop-up slide? Because when my foot hit the bag, I could immediately pop up and see where the ball was. Well, I'm going to look backwards here and see that old Swayze field had a chain link fence, wooden bleachers, and lo and behold, the players used wooden bats of all things. <laughs> things have changed, the equipment's a little, a little better, high technology stadiums, but the fundamentals of being a Rebel player is, are still the same no matter what sport you're in, whether it's in 1968 or 2015. You have to have pride before you, before you leave the locker room to put that uniform on and to lay everything on the line for your teammates, not yourself. You have to prepare yourself in season and out, out of season because I always believe what you did off the field determined how you performed on the field. You need to play with passion. I had fire in my eyes before I ever left the dugout, and I wanted all my teammates, including Archie Manning, to have that too. And I would tell him, Archie, you need to get fired up now. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Persevere through the slumps that are going to come and press on towards your goal. Uh, it is true. Your attitude can really determine your altitude. And I'm going to look around now, and I'm going to pick them up, and I'm going to lay them down and head around third base just as fast as I can. How many of you have seen a guy going around third base tripping over the chalk line and rolling three or four uh, times somersaults and get tagged out? Or somebody coming around the third baseline and running into the third base coach and the third baseman picks, uh, uh, tags each runner out. Unexpected things can happen in life, right? Unplanned things and ca chaos can result. Yogi Berra said it best when he said, the world isn't perfect. If it was, it wouldn't be the world. <laughs> Think about that <laughs> for a while. So the question isn't in your athletic life, your personal life, or your professional life, is chaos going to happen? The question is, when chaos happens, which way are you going to go? The blueprint for my, for my uh, success plan and recovery in my life it comes from the Apostle Paul when he said to the Philippians, but this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for what God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Your abilities are the gifts God gives to you. What, what you give back to God is your gift to Him. Jackie Robinson said, one's measure is found in the significance 
in the fact of the measure of a man is found in the significance of the impact you have on somebody else's life. So the challenge is before us, rebels with spirit. Inspire belief. Encourage those who are down. Pass on an attitude of overcoming. Pass on an, an attitude of victory in your life. For you see, rebels, you've got to run this race. Keep the faith in all you do. You've got to run this race. Set the pace for those who follow you. Run to win. Do your best. Lead the way for all the rest. Lay aside every sin. For you see, rebels, in this life, you must run to win. Look ahead to the prize. Don't be led to compromise. For there's a crown that will shine when you cross the finish line. You'll be an example of who Jesus is. So others will see you, and they'll know that you are his. May your every word, action, and thought lead the way to his glorious cross. For you see, rebels, you've got to run to win. Keep the faith in all you do. You've got to run to win. Set the pace for those who follow you. And as you run your race, may I encourage you to lift up others, inspire belief, persevere through the slumps, press on, finish the race, beat state, hotty toddy, go Rebs. <laughs>
start off by by saying um, thank you, Lord. Um, thank you for this opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be on this stage. Um, man, if, if y'all just only knew the path that it, it took to get to Ole Miss, you know why I said that. Um, let me first of all start saying, let me first start by saying thank you to the M Club. Uh, thank you guys for voting me in. Um, it's truly, truly a special honor. I'm truly humbled to be up here before you guys, before all the other inductees and, and, uh, and the rest that are in there now. Man, when I started out here at Ole Miss um, in 03, you know, I just, I remember looking up, just looking up and seeing, like, looking up at the, being in the practice stadium or in the game stadium and and seeing other guys, you know, wondering how, you know, how those names got up there, wondering, like, you know, what did they do to get those names up there? And and then it, it hit me, it was simple. You know, they just played ball. And for some reason, like, you know, people thought they were good enough to, to go up there. So I told myself that's what I would do. <sighs> Man. <laughs> Um, potential. Potential is what you could be, but you haven't become it yet. So for me, I'll never forget, you know, Ole Miss chose me. And, and, I, and I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart because I, I wanted to go to Tennessee. I'm from Tennessee. I wanted to go to the University of Tennessee and and they pretty much told me that, you know, we don't want you. And I, won't, I would not lie to you guys. I remember, you know, going home and, and just the five-hour drive home. And I remember crying. I remember talking to my, talking to my foster dad. And, um, and I couldn't believe it because, I mean, that's, that's why I bled. You know how some of you guys, like, you know, y'all, some of you bleed bleed Ole Miss, you know, it's the only thing you think about, you know, being a rebel. Well, I thought about being a ball like that. And when they told me no, I'll never forget, you know, just being at home. And, and I was going through the ACT at the time. And I would not lie to y'all, it took me, <laughs> I had to take the a ACT five times, but that's how determined I was to not give up. And and it wasn't because, you know, I wasn't smart. It's just, I didn't know how to take them big tests. <laughs> I really didn't. But by the grace of God, you know, I stayed at it and I, I, I persevered and I was able to to get my score, but most importantly, I never forget Ole Miss showing up at my school, Coach McIntyre, and I had no idea who Ole Miss was, what Ole Miss was about. You know, growing up only having three channels, 7, 11, and 16, you know, you don't get to see, uh, <laughs> you don't get to see Ole Miss, you know, um, at all, but I I'll never forget, you know, Coach Coach McIntyre and um, coming in and, and, and showing me that he wanted me, and that's all I ever wanted was a chance. I just wanted a chance to show what kind of player I could be because I always felt inside, I always knew the potential I had inside because of the work ethic that I had inside of me. And, and, I, and I, I know to this day that no, no person can look from the outside and judge the work ethic from a person within. Um, and that's, that, that's what I'm about. I'm about working, um, giving everything I got. And I'm truly grateful for my time at Ole Miss. I'm truly grateful for the for the players I played with, um, had some great, great players. And most of all, I want to thank Coach O, um, Coach Ordron, because when he came in, you know, my junior year, I never forget he set me down as new coaching, new coaching staff, you know, Coach Cutcliffe, everybody had got fired and here I am now, you know, what do I do? I'm nervous, you know, we got this coaching staff coming in from USC and I'm like, man, USC, this is a big school. You know, these school, no school no school wanted me, you know, at all. And then you got this coach coming in, and I wasn't sure. But I'll never forget he set me down, and he said, um, he said, P. Willie, you're the general. You are the general of this defense. However it goes, it's on you. So when y'all see this, when y'all see the play at, um, at LSU, the reason that play was what it was because i never forget making a call and the guys – making the call and it wasn't right. The line wasn't right. And the first thing I thought to myself, you're playing LSU, you know, and at this point I know what the, I know what it means to be playing against LSU. And the only thing I could think to myself is you're the general, 
It's all in your back. Good or bad, it rides on you. And because of that play, you know, because of that play, I, I'll never forget, like, I told myself, I said, I look. <laughs> that first thing popped in my head was Coach O. And I was like, you the general. And I just took off. And I said, you know what, I just somehow I found it. And, and it was amazing. And I'm truly blessed this day to be up here. And, and I thank you guys for having me. Man, you know, it's <laughs> big shoes to follow from, from you guys. But I, I'm truly grateful to be up here. And thank you all for inviting me back and also to be a part of this Hall of Fame. And, and I, I see this. And this right here, to me, number 38, this, this is one of the best awards I could have ever won in my life to this day. As great as this right here is, without, you know, with this, this right here makes it that much better. It says, Chuck, the great Chucky Mullins says, I may give out, but I'll never give up. And to this day, I still live by that motto. So thank you guys for having me back. Thank you for letting me be a part of this. It's truly an honor. Um, I'm going to continue to do my best to represent uh, the best way that I know how. Um, continue to fight. Adi Tadi. <laughs> Thank y'all. Great class. Uh, we'll do another round of applause for the whole uh, six deductions and their families. Uh, it's been a great evening. I thank for everyone uh, coming and participating like I think John or someone said. Um, a, lot, a lot of things you can do at night and I appreciate y'all showing up. But I'd also like to challenge the six inductees. Come back. Okay, keep staying involved with with Ole Miss. Um, Patrick, I know you live a long way away. Uh, Dawson, you don't have excuse, so you need to come back. Uh, <laughs> but I know Andy will be back, so I know he's always here, but I encourage y'all to stay involved. Dory, I know you're going around playing, but I'd love to have everyone back. Um, uh, it's a great university. Um, I think if you come here, you don't know what you're missing. Uh, so stay involved. Uh, strongly encourage that. Um, I know Ross and Steve would love to see everybody back here, wouldn't you? So, uh, but thanks everybody for coming. Uh, a few housekeeping. I think we need all the inductees to come back up here, and all uh, fellow M Club Hall of Famers need to come up here if you're here, and also the George Lauder House um, Service Award members come up and get a big group picture. But anyway, thanks. See y'all tomorrow. And you said the M Club room opens at 3:30, so see you in the M Club room, and let's let's go beat some Commodores. All right, see you later.